John Hofmeister knows the differences between upstream and downstream. The former president of Shell Oil now with Citizens for Affordable Energy. John, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Ben Dell at Sanford Bernstein predicted this five years ago. We knew we were going to get to high cost production in this new technology in the United States. What's the surprise in the announcements yesterday? Uh, I don't actually find anything really surprising, Tom, because you don't manage these companies on a quarter to quarter basis. They are project managed kind of organizations, and they take a long time sometimes to get the capital expenditure in line with production. And there are periods when you have heavier investment, lighter investment. But I've also been predicting uh, that we would be finding this exact kind of difficulty. Yeah in this time period for a very long time because when you look at the reservoirs around the world and some of the big plays that are out there whether it's east africa arctic circle uh, you, you look at uh, brazil these plays take a very very long time and the industry is not anywhere near ready to produce meanwhile you're relying on old reservoirs that are more and more difficult to get the same output, right. and with the shale formations, you're dealing with rapid decline rates. So, John, are these companies too big to make a profit then? No, no, it just takes time. And, and of course, investors are not always patient. Uh, but within the industry, there has to be uh, a, a patience where you, you really are bringing technology, capital, and human beings together to really struggle with the earth to release those molecules and it's not really a, 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 a Wall Street dream to be investing in oil companies that struggle against uh, uncertainties that many other companies don't face. Well John, one of the problems for these companies, and I know Exxon is a good example of this, they've been investing in natural gas. Will that bet ever pay off? Yes it will when this country gets its house in order and we stop playing politics with energy and we turn natural gas loose as a transportation fuel. Natural gas needs a new market. There's no better new market than transportation fuel. LNG export is fine, but the real market for natural gas in this country, number one, it breaks the OPEC hold on price. Number two, it brings more hydrocarbons into the supply chain, and that would raise the price of natural gas and make the XTO acquisition at Exxon right. very profitable. But and, and, and the other companies as well. But John, as an oil guy, I'm confused. Do you want a federal energy policy or do you want them to get out of the way? Well, it's more complicated than that, <laughs> isn't it? Always. What we don't need are the day-to-day -day politics driving energy policy. That's nuts. What we need is a long-term plan. I've argued in my book, Why We Hate the Oil Companies, We've got to get a new governance model for energy, more like a Fed model, where we can set policy over decades, not over election cycles. And, and when you have election cycle driven federal policy, whether it's the RIN problem we have with biofuels, mm. whether it's the lack of access in the five year plan that, that the Obama administration's put forward, you really screw up an energy industry badly and that's what the politicians do and, and so it just can't work on an election cycle right. basis you've got to have a longer term mm -hmm. view and a plan well, no that, that question. goes along with it no question the politics are at play here john we've also got jeffrey mccracken here who leads our m a team at bloomberg jeff everyone was hoping for some big merger and acquisition activity out of energy been a little slim picking. Right. It's been very, very quiet. Probably as quiet of a year as I can remember in M&A uh, in the oil and gas and energy space. I mean, Hess has done some transactions, largely because activists forced them, and Chesapeake's had a few things, but generally been pretty quiet, and I think we've all been surprised. I'm not exactly sure the reason why. Maybe John has some ideas on why we haven't seen big multi-billion dollar transactions John, in the oil and gas space. any ideas? Well, I don't think it's a good bet. Uh, I think the big guys are so big that if you uh, really become even larger, it's even more difficult to manage. There uh, has been some acquisition activity in the equipment business. For example, disclosure, I was on the Lufkin board, and Lufkin was acquired by GE. Right. So in the services and equipment business, there has been a bit of M&A. But at the large production level, right. there's a point right. at which you really can't manage greater okay. size. John, thank you so much. John Hofmeister.